the topic is learning agility, but I'm going to start with uh, the number 209. And I'm going to show you a video, and I want you to know, I want you to figure out what the significance of 209 is. That's your first task. Simple video, not long, uh, about something you may have already seen. And I'm going to whoop down here. So what is the significance of 208 seconds? The time he hit the bird, the birds hit him, uh, he had 209 seconds to do something. And when he was finished, he went from 209, uh, from birds hit to 209 seconds, 155 people were standing on the wing of his airplane in the Hudson River. And all through this, he, he was told not to do it. <laughs> and what I'm talking about today is why is it that he could do that? What did he do? Uh, and it is such a perfect example of learning agility. Because if you start unraveling what he did as a, uh, uh, in his career, he was a glider pilot. So what do you think was the significance of being a glider pilot? What did he actually do with the, uh, the jet airplane? Glided it mm -hmm. down, right? Um, he was a fighter pilot. He was an instructor of, of, of uh, people who, who want to become pilots, a, a flight instructor. He also volunteered to be a CAG or a, uh, an accident or, or crash investigator. So all this culminated on the time in, uh, what, uh, January, about eight years ago, when he used all that stuff from a learning agility point of view, and he put it to good use and did what was considered to be the impossible. The question is, how could he do it? Why did he do it? And what were the elements of that? What I want to talk to you in my time that I have left here with you is why that's so important. And why is it that that learning agility that he displayed will be the new thing in the new world that will tell or differentiate you and will say whether you get promoted or not. It's not how smart you are. It doesn't, know, it doesn't matter what you know. Uh, how agile are you at learning and what attitude you have towards it will make a dramatic dissess, uh, difference. So it's a new concept and I want you to open your mind a bit uh, to look at it uh, as if, uh, okay Bill, that's possible. Because right now, what, what is your number one career anchor that gets you on the road to success, do you think? Effectiveness, Effectiveness but wh that's not a thing, that's something you do, right? What is, what is the thing that you anchor yourself on to say, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be successful? <coughs> Could be knowledge and experience. Now the problem is, uh, how many years experience, may I ask, you've had in the business world? 30. 30. So how do you equate 30 years to value. So have you optimized those 30 years? Because when I joined the bank, I spent 35 years in the banking business and I had 38 jobs in 35 years. Now I didn't know it, but I was learning agile when I first joined the bank. Uh, and the point is though, when I moved around a lot and did different jobs, what was that helping me with? What was it helping me with? Change. But I'm, Looking at things differently, I'm learning how, uh, dirty jobs, what's a dirty job? What's the problem with a dirty job? Is it fun? Is it challenging? Do you have to think? Adaptation. Is there any rules? Adaptation, very good, adaptation. That whole adaptation part is a big part of, of how this works. So because you're primarily project managers, is that most, put your hand up if you're a project manager. Put your hand up if you're an excellent project manager. Finally, somebody put their hand up. If you were all five years old and I asked the same equivalent question, how many hands would go up? Everybody's, right? Mm -hmm. Now, in my coaching business, whenever uh, self-confidence is always the number one thing. The number two thing is, are you self-aware? The number three thing is, are you self-disciplined? Self-confidence is really, really important, and we're going to come back to that. So look at it this way. I've got a series of six questions here. The first is, I want to explain to you what learning agility is. That's the first step. The second thing I want to do is give you a sense of why is it important now? Why was it important 40 years ago? Three, why is it it's a differentiator? Why is it the thing that's going to make the difference? Why are you going to stand out because you're learning agile? Four, so what does good look like? So why do you need to know what good looks like? Why is that important? Why, why is it knowing what good looks like makes a big difference? If you don't know what good looks like, anything will do. So you work in an organization and they think that uh, project management works this way. 
and you do exactly how your organization says to do it. But when you get into a bigger world, you find out that no, 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 that's not the right way to do it. But in your culture, what did you expect or think? Because the question I ask people, are you a project manager professional who, who happens to work for ABC? Or are you an ABC employee who happens to be doing project management? Like, which is it? They are dramatically different, right? So the point here is, I want to help you understand what good looks like, because once you know what good looks like, you can figure out your gap. How do you enable it? That's a very key uh, question here. So how do I get, Bill, more uh, learning agile? And at the end, I have a call to action that I want you all to act on. So why am I so hep on you taking action tomorrow? Why is that? How many times do you go to a class, do you actually take action with what you learned? Ari, how many times do you actually take action the next 48 hours? Next 48 hours, very rare. Yes. Now, what happens if you don't transform your learning into value? Yeah, the brain. Now, one of the, the big parts of this uh, is this. So this brain is a replica. Somebody thought it was real. It doesn't smell. And uh, every time I go overseas, which is a lot, they always inspect my luggage because I got this thing in my... You know. uh, the point is, though, 95% of this works on autopilot. And the brain you think you have, a prefrontal cortex, is by roughly weight about 6 or 7%. It's a very small uh, comparison to the rest of the brain. So the point is, if you're mostly on autopilot and thinking subconsciously or unconsciously, what does it mean for the way you work and the way you learn? You're not thinking about it, and if, here's the problem. The brain, since you're born, is establishing programs and neural pathways, and if you're not paying attention, it's going to keep running those neural pathways, those maps, and how you see the world. And what's the problem if you're running maps that are way back when you were six? Well, they may work, but they may not, right? Uh, have you ever heard of the term bias? Have you heard in the United States they have a thing, they're training their policemen with implicit bias? What is implicit bias? There's biases you don't know about. That's why it's called implicit. If it was explicit, well, we'd know. Um, so it's not like the Ku Klux Klan. The Ku Klux Klan, they'd have an explicit bias, whereas a lot of policemen have implicit bias, which affects the way they think. So number one, I want you to think of learning as a process, not an event. In other words, it takes a while, and you have to keep repeating things. Knowledge does not equal understanding. The point is, just because I have a PMP, does it mean I understand project management? No, it's a driver's license, guys. That's all it is. My, my daughter got her driver's license when she graduated from school. I was being a good father. I bought her a car. First day, she smashed it up. Dad, I, com I confused the gas pedal with a brake. Now, she was dating the guy who did the evaluation of her test, but that's another story. <laughs> Novel is the new normal. I want you to think of the world differently. The world is not going to give you a chance to practice and have six tries at it. You need to be good when whatever is presented to you now, right? You don't have the luxury of planning. You don't. Sully, did he have the plan? Can you imagine his co-pilot saying, so, birds, hit, hit wind, flip, 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 page six. Oh, no, then you go to page 12. And he only has nine, you know, 209 seconds. What did Captain Sully do, do you think, when the birds hit the engines? No, no, he did not. He, he spent 30 seconds of the 209 doing what? Figuring out options, what's going on, and he was spending time calming himself down. Why would he calm himself down? So he can think. He knows about neuroscience too, right? He said, okay, if I go like this, I get upset or angry or, or, or excited. And what happens to his crew when they pick up that he's excited and uh, unhinged? There's neural, neural, neural neurons, uh, mirror neurons rather, in your brain, and everybody picks it up. Have you ever seen the boss come into work and we all take up the mood of the boss? Every, every leadership class I do, I send an article around about uh, mood contagion and how much the brain is able to pick up the mood of the boss. It's, you walk in, uh, uh, first name? Debbie, Debbie you, you walk, you're the key top PM here, right? Yeah. yeah. What, what walks into the room, in a moment you can pick it out, right? How they walk, how they talk. Why, why can you do that? 
why is it your brain so sensitive to do that? Our ancestors had to pay attention to three things, danger, food, and sex. Clinton had more of the sex part, but that's another story. <laughs> the point is not about paying attention to sex for that purpose. It was for mating. So the point is, have you ever been sleeping and in the middle of the night you pick up a little sound that's odd, but yet you'll sleep through the alarm clock, right? Have you ever, and we pay attention to danger all the time, and what do we also pay attention to? Food. Now, when you eat, do you eat mindfully, or do you just eat and shovel it in and just keep going? Well, I'm busy. Well, I'm watching TV, I'm working on my computer, and you're, you're, you don't even know you, you ate what you ate. Right? Have you ever driven somewhere and you don't remember how you got there? So, who's driving the car? Your subconscious is very good, right? It does that stuff. So learning agility is the ability and willingness to learn from experience and apply it uh, in uh, other situations. It's that simple. It's a mindset. Has anybody read any Carol Dweck's work on uh, mindset? I highly recommend you read it. She talks about there are growth mindsets and there are fixed mindsets. What happens if you believe you have a fixed mindset and uh, neuroplasticity-wise, you can't grow, can't get better, or never improve. And you believe this, by the way. What's going to happen? Fifteen minutes. Gonna, you're not going to grow, right? <coughs> you're not going to grow. What's her name? Carol Dweck. It's easier to say than it is to spell. Um, so Carol Dweck talks about that mindset thing, and that's what this is all about in, in the process. So learning agility is the ability and willingness to learn from experience. When Captain Sully was, or Sullenberger was confronted by the statement, so you crashed the damn plane in the Hudson River. He says, no, I executed a forced water landing uh, and uh, I had every intent of saving everybody and that was the desired outcome of the process. I did not crash my plane. So what's the difference between a pilot who's doing a forced water landing in the water versus one who's crashing and hoping somebody lives? Control. Confidence. Intention, right? And that's a big part of what he did. So, uh, one of the things he said, and this is Katie Couric grilled him. Has anybody seen her interview people? She, she is wheeling, <coughs> whatever. And she was pressing him and pressing him, and he said, one way of looking at this might be that for 42 years, I've been making small regular deposits to the bank of experience, education and training, and on January 15th, the balance was sufficient so that I could make a very large withdrawal. That's exactly what he did, right? Now, I want all of you to begin making deposits to your bank account slash uh, uh, learning account so that you can call on that stuff anytime you need it in the process. And I'm going to show you how. We live in a VUCA world, and that's why it's a problem. Uh, the manifestations of this are, 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 are difficult. Volatility means what? Anybody have a stock portfolio? Yeah. Below what I paid, above what I paid. Why don't I sell the stock? Well, because you have a belief or a vision that if you leave it, yeah, chances are it's going to go. So volatility is, is a big problem, but if you have a strong vision, it makes a difference. So well, how many projects are missing the vision? And what's the impact? Bless you. So what's the impact if you don't have a vision? Well, because there's, but if I've got a vision and I know where we're going, if we're behind on Tuesday, do I really care? Because I know we have a vision. I know we're going to get there, right? Does that make sense? If I don't have that vision, that volatility is a big deal. Well, hope is not a strategy. Um, but you're right. But a vision, would you agree that a vision is a good thing? Uncertainty. Well, uncertainty is a big problem. What happens when the brain is sensing uncertainty? Fear, it goes into panic slash the, the, the technical neuroscience response is, or point is, it goes into threat response, danger response, which it moves away from where I want you to go. Complexity, too much, oh, by the way, what do project managers do for uncertainty that Bud Lush was talking about? Risk management. Now, I'm going to convince you to take more risks, not less. So, Bud and I may have to talk. Complexity uh, is too many moving parts. What do you project managers do to uh, tame that one? Yeah, it's called work breakdown structure, right? 
Now, do the business people appreciate the work breakdown structure? No. Now, sometimes you have to educate this and do some framing about you, you have a big role to play on the impact of complexity because what is volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity doing to the work environment? What is it doing to our brains? Stress. And what's stress doing? What's happening is we're, we're in a constant stress response mode and our cognitive skills are co uh, compromised and do we have a release? Do we have a way of managing the stress? It depends, right? Ambiguity. What's the problem with ambiguity? Ambiguity is about what? Old woman or young woman? Both. Well, can you, see this? can you see both of them together? No. You can only see one or the other, right? So ambiguity is the enemy of commitment. If I don't have commitment, all I have is compliance. So you can begin to see how, how serious these are, yeah? So if you accept that, uh, the, the differentiator is this, is this simple. Uh, all of you have a personal brand. It's what your promise of value delivery. It's what you, uh, you're known for, what you stand for, and what you're capable of becoming. That's why you get promoted. You don't get promoted on your performance. If you have a strong uh, promise, Ari, I, I depend on you because you have strong conviction about doing the right thing under pressure. I promote you because your colleagues say wonderful things about you. I promote you because you've got a lot of potential and you're capable of growing and you don't have a fixed mindset. Or the opposite could be true. Everybody with me? So if you accept that, what think of learning agility, it is a multiplier of all the stuff you learned in school, all the things that you're doing on the job. You put those together, they are worth X plus X, but if you multiply them by your ability to learn agilely, your potential is, is way bigger. Anybody know why? Why is it that if you're more nimble and you're an adaptive learner and you're not rigid, your potential goes up significantly? Right, and for example, uh, in the old days, when I was in the bank, I had to get my manager's permission to get married. That's how rigid the bank was, right? So if you have a problem and you're able, well, Sully, look at Sully. What did he draw on to figure out what to do? 30 seconds. He took 30 seconds. Uh, he took 30 seconds out of 209, I don't know what percentage that is, to figure out how bad is it, what's going on, and what are my options? Why did he spend that valuable time in a calm state? Why did he do that? He was, he was processing what's in front of him and beginning to take pieces of what he knew. He took a little bit of the gliding experience, a little bit of the crash investigation experience, and he knew, and he said this in an interview, I've investigated countless crashes and you can't get to airports the way they said you could get there. You can't do it. And when he was on the, after the, he saved 155 people, everybody loves him, but the uh, aeronautics board decided to persecute him. Anybody know why? Anybody seen the movie? Great movie. They persecuted him because they thought he was grandstanding. <laughs> 155 people live, yet they go after him. And what he said was, well, I tell you what, you're leaving out the human factor, because he said, of the people who did the simulation, how many times did they try in the simulation to get it right? What do you think the answer was? 17. It took the people using the flight simulator 17 tries to do what he did in 209 seconds. So what does it tell you? Well, no, it tells you that they were simulating it, but they were saying, well, I, I see the birds. I, I automatically try to go to the airport. He said, no, 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 I took 30, it took me 30 seconds to figure out what the heck's going on. Then I did it. When they rerun everything with a 30 second lag and all the technological simulators, everybody crashed. That's why. That's why. And he said, I didn't know the end of the book. I didn't even know that the engines were actually out. And it's a brilliant example of the learning agility lesson because he, he was trusting of his instincts on what he had learned and known of the 45 years he's been on the planet. It, I, I, I did a taping of this in New York and it was a perfect. It, it could not have been more perfect. Yeah. So what do, you, what do people look like that uh, have this differentiation? I call it more for, less A. The F here stands for they're more focused. Learning agile people are more focused. Uh, they're more organized, they're more driven, et cetera, in the process. They're more, they are much more original. 
why is it that I, originality is a great idea? What does it mean to be original? You're not copying. You're willing to take a chance. You're going to do it differently. You're going to, you're going to figure it out. Why is Agile such a big deal? What does Agile give you? Adaptability, transparency, all those good things. Yeah? Uh, the, the R here is more resilient. Now, the most important quality you need to survive in this world of VUCA is resiliency. What does that mean? What is resiliency? Or if I throw you in the water and you sink 20 feet, you come up. All the, every time. Now, if, you're, if I think you're not going to be able to make it, you can't swim, I'll give you a life preserver. But resiliency says you keep uh, jumping back. Why is it a learning agile person needs to be very resilient? Are you going to try things that may be a little bit out there? Yeah. Are you afraid of that? No. Do you know that you'll bounce back? Yes. So you're much more confident to do that, right? Have you seen people at work that are afraid to try something new? Why? Well, partly, or they've been programmed to think in a certain way. I do a lot of work with engineers, IT people, and financial people who are very rigid, right, in their processing in this, in this, in this piece. Uh, and the E is they're much more extroverted. They're, they connect more uh, in the process. Less A is the interesting one. They're less accommodating. <coughs> What does it mean to be less accommodating? Well, Ari back here, he looks like he's an expert and he's, he's telling me all these things and I say, well, Ari, prove it. I don't, I don't believe you. Now, I do it in a friendly way, but if I'm willing to push and, 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 and push back, what's the likelihood of the better answer we're going to get if I'm willing to push back on him and something he's telling me? I can accept your wisdom, perhaps, in your experience, but how do I know your experience is still relevant, right? I do it friendly, You're but... Validating. Pardon? You're validating. You're validating it, but just because he's got 30 years of experience, let's say, and I've only got two years of experience, does that mean that my mind is any less effective here? In fact, there's evidence that millennials are better at this than baby boomers. Millennials were, were conditioned to be more collaborative, etc. It's not totally there, but it's a helping part there. So what does good look like? Well, it's, it's all about these five things. One is you need to be self-aware. And authenticity comes from this self-awareness. It's very critical. If you don't know yourself, you, it's not going to work. If you can't manage yourself, uh, you can't lead others. The next part of this is uh, results agility. First time, uh, someone says, well, if, you, if, I don't, if I haven't done it before, how can you expect me to do it? What's the answer to that? Yeah, find a way. Find a way, and there are ways. You don't have to have done it 16 times to get it right. Is it possible you might not? Eh, yeah, but uh, adjust and go forward and learn. Change agility, comfortable with change. What is it that people resist in change? What's the brain doing? What's the brain got in its brain? Autopilot. It, 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 it is a pattern recognition system. So my wife the other day moved the toaster in the kitchen. It was a major issue, which I lost the battle, but the point was, why is it that I was upset that the, 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 to oh, the toilet, the uh, toaster was moved? <laughs> I've been used to doing it the same way all the time, right? It's, it's, it's part of the thing. Openness, mental agility, very clear. Are you open or closed-minded? Do you have uh, openness to new ideas uh, in the process? And lastly, that empathy that comes with that uh, skilled communication, and it doesn't matter how many or what um, ethnicity. How many of you have read a book or taken a course on cultural intelligence in the last year? Cultural intelligence. Not in the last year, because after a year it's not going to work. <laughs> Why do you, how many cultures are in this room right now? Several, several. And the way that you interact with people and the way that you connect, uh, this empathy thing, well, there's, there's things about decorum that I should be aware of, but in some cultures, friendliness is interpreted a different way. And if I don't know that, am I going to get a buy? Oh, you're just one of those Canadians that doesn't know that uh, you're supposed to have two hands on the business card or whatever. So that's what good looks like. Uh, and learning agility comes around all of these. I've already in innovated this. This has been modified. There are now, there's one more uh, that I've inserted, and that's called emotional agility that I put in a week ago. Why would I put in emotional agility? 
Why do you have to be agile emotionally? You, you, have you heard of the term emotional intelligence? Yeah. yeah. So your emotions, it's a matter of, I've done a lot of research with Yale University and the kids in the inner city of the United States. And they have some wonderful programs. And I had more time, I go deeper. But the point is, in the, if you have mental agility, you've got to have emotional agility here. Because emotions uh, are, are the big factor. In fact, 95% uh, of this, and, and a lot of this is on the emotional end, and the historians equate the emotion to the elephant and your, your thinking to the rider of the elephant. So what does that mean? The, uh, the, 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 the logical, rational part is a rider and the emotional part is the elephant. If the elephant doesn't want to go and the elephant sits down, nine tons, you weigh 150 pounds, good luck. The rider may give the elephant the destination, but if the elephant doesn't want to go, am I right? How many of us eat the bag of chips and we shouldn't eat the bag of chips at night? How do we enable it? Give me five minutes and I'll finish this. Prime is the concept of priming what you, uh, you're, 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 you're learning here in the process. Because here's the thing, I'm going to go back a bit, one, one step here. Think of it this way. Learning agility is the key to unlocking your lessons of experience. What does that mean? Learning agility is the key to unlocking your, uh, the lessons of experience. Have you gotten all the value out of the experience that you've had in the workforce? Maybe, maybe not, right? So what I want you to do is think about a, a different way of looking at that, and it spells the word prime. Prime your learning. And remember what uh, Sully did. He didn't crash, he had a what? A forced water landing, right? They're, they're, they're dramatically different. Performing. Performing means when you're doing your job, you manage the stress and you stay calm. So why do you have to stay calm? Why do you have to stay calm? The emotions don't take over. The elephant, the elephant's going to stampede if you don't careful. It happens all the time, right? Have you ever gotten mad when somebody uh, insults you? Gives you feedback you don't like? Uh, somebody invades your space? The elephant, mm, right? So when you're performing the job, you want to stay engaged, you want to handle stress. Mindfulness is a very big thing here. Because if I can stay in the present moment, what does it do for my brain? Focus. Now, the trouble is, the narrative system in the brain is either worrying about the poker game last night that I lost too much money, I haven't told my wife, or i got to pick up the kids at three. It's not in the present moment. I bet you, when you look at your boss and talk to your boss, your boss is not in the present moment either. They're doing their email, or they're doing their... Uh, what's this iPhone thing, right? What do we do with the iPhone when we're talking to people? You look at people, they have the, I, the iPhone hunch, right? They walk around like that. Anyway. Reflecting. Hungry for feedback. You've got to be uh, aggressive with feedback. Why, why is that? Why do you need to reflect and, and process and learn? I bet you you don't do a retrospective on your meetings to find out what you could do better next time. Am I right? You've done it. So? So? But how can you convince them to do it? That's about leadership. It's about framing it. It's about uh, finding a way to, to help people in the process. But that idea of, ref of, of reflection and et cetera is a, a very big part of this. Innovation. Challenge the status quo. The status quo. Why do they call it the status quo? It's, yeah, it's the way it is. Yeah. And Kevin does a really good job in his programs about how agile evolved. And the status quo in the agile world is called what? waterfall, right? Although, if you listen to Kevin's uh, tapes and, and things, you'll find out there was a lot of Agile going on before it was called Agile in the process, right? Monitor. Monitor your brain, and the thing you want to really attack is uh, defensiveness. Uh, and, and the problem is, if you're defensive, and you're not listening, and your brain is less, you're, you've got the cognitive skills of a 10-year-old, uh, it's a really big problem in the process, right? So the idea here is I'm, I'm always monitoring my, my, my process here to make sure that that's not happening. My mother used to say, never make a decision when you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. Because if you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, that is going to happen, yeah. right, in the process. So be careful with this. It, it is a big, big uh, reality here. Plus, people don't like defensive people, by the way. Lastly, explore. <laughs> Try new things. If Bud Lush was here, we talk about progressive risk. It means you're taking risk for the right reasons and you're managing it, but you've got to explore. You've got to take chances. Right? So 
What chance did Sully take? He ignored the instructions from the conning tower. Uh, what else? What else? What other chance or risk did he take? We've never done a water landing in the world, by the way. What other chance? <laughs> so think about it, right? And but he knew he could do it. He what he did was he glided along the the, the shore of the Hudson, and he finally realized, yep, I, I can't get over to the other airports. So he just went around and and landed in the in the process, and he used his gliding uh, techniques to do that. Somebody asked him in an interview, "What would you have done if there had been a boat in the Hudson?" And he said, oh, "I'll fly around it." So you can see how his his brain works, right, and how he, he processed what he learned. And if you look at what he did, uh, he's a great example of the quality that uh, I'm talking about here. Because what would it do for your brand if you're known as somebody like Sully, that is uh, confident and ready to uh, attack the problem and put their experience to good use in the process? What's the advantage to your brand? Well, they're going to trust you, but they're going to believe in you and what you stand for and all those good things. The old ways of, of using the textbook and, and using what used to work, there's a very good chance because of VUCA, it's not going to work right? in the process. Call to action. One, treat learning as a, uh, a process, not an event. What does that mean? It, it's a process. In other words, uh, I need to review things after I, I learn something to reinforce it. And if, if this, to really sink in, you need to get a good night's sleep tonight. So the more you sleep at night, the better you sleep at night, the consolidation happens. I want you to stop, that's the start, I want you to stop defensiveness, it's got to go. But you have to replace it with something. You cannot stop anything unless you replace it. If there's defensiveness, then what? What are you going to replace it with? Curiosity might be a good way of doing it in the process. And the last thing is continue, uh, keep educating yourself in the process, uh, and that will make a... Uh, dramatic difference. End of the day, it comes down to this, right? Uh, know your brain, know your brain. Observe your brain, direct your brain. Because it's not really you that's getting into trouble, it's your brain. Right? So I've given you an out. You can blame somebody else. So thank you very much for your time, and I'm sorry Madam Timer, I went over that. Uh, if you have any questions, you can send me an email. Uh, but I want you to uh, go away from this and watch the movie Sully. That would be a big advantage for you. Plus, it's very entertaining. Thanks a lot.